Yes, this is lecture six, space requirements and layout. And this is the continuation for part one of this lecture. Uh, we are gonna pick up from, from here uh, in which we are gonna start discussing the atmospheric systems. So atmospheric systems, they provide for the health and comfort of occupants in a facility and for the needs of building equipment, uh, of the building equipment and, and machinery. Help maintain uh, the work environment. There are codes that require only a minimum indoor temperature in the winter, um, especially for, for facilities that are located in, in cold locations. So there are some codes that will, will tell you what is the minimum, minimum indoor temperature for such a facility. Um, and their market standards for different building types provide more precise responses involving cooling and humidification. One example of such standard is found in healthcare facilities where humidity is held close to 50%. This humidity level is the optimum for inviting the growth of viruses and bacteria. A more significant problem is the introduction of inorganic chemicals, pollutants into the building atmospheres from sources in the building. The major air quality problem in most buildings is the buildup of odor and airborne particulate matter. The rate of dilution is expressing as, as the feet cube um, divided by minute feet square of the floor area. One can see that the way to eliminate unwanted substances is to dilute them both by mixing uh, stale air that is in the building and by adding fresh outdoor air. This air exchange or dilution rate is typically expressed in air, air changes per hour and it's stipulated by local code requirements as it pertains to the building use. In table one, we show typical air changes rates for several building use types, including uh, residents, um, depending on the area of the residence. Uh, if you are in the toilet room, the kitchen, or other rooms, it tells you um, the exhaust amount and the air change an hour. For office commercial buildings, you see how the supply uh, air changes. Same thing for exhaust and the air changes per hour. In school, you have a larger supply air when compared to commercial buildings and increases as you look at public assembly and also to hospitals. Um, so again, these are um, stipulated by local code requirements and it, it pertains to the type of building that you're looking at. The equipment to bring in fresh air and remove stale air is a primary consideration in planning a facility. And that's why we, we are discussing these details in this lecture. Um, equipment rooms, these are the space requirement is governed by the size of the equipment room. So depending of, of the use, like if it is residential, it's 2%, office, industrial, high to 7%, public assembly, 10 to 15 and, and so on. Um, um, and we're talking about the equipment to bring the fresh air and remove the stale air. So this is the area that is basically allowed out of the, the whole building for, for these purposes, for the equipment. As the air exchange rate increases, the handling equipment area also increases. So for example, you will expect laboratory in which you are dealing with uh, viruses and, and so on, you will need more 
uh, exchange, air exchange. So that's why more equipment will be needed. Uh, so that occupies a larger portion of the building. Uh, in terms of duct sizes, uh, they can, can be estimated from air, air quantities and air speeds in ducts. Um, so the main duct is about 1,800 feet per minute and the branch ducts 900 to 1,100 more or less feet per minute. Um, Clover sizes, these areas are also estimated from air quantities and air speeds. So the exhaust uh, recommended air speed is 2,000 feet per minute and the intake recommended air speed is about 1,000 feet per minute. Um, clean room facilities are, are typical um, when, when you're dealing with very um, technology most of the time um, in which you are using these very expensive materials and uh, materials that are they're needed to be treated with carefully. Um, we have a, a clean room at the MIDI building. If you go to the first floor uh, of that building, you'll see that there's a clean room there and facility to deal with materials. Um, so some utilities planners are often called upon to design carefully controlled environments for electronics, pharmaceuticals, or food processing operations. These control environments are known as clean rooms. And one widely recognized method used to achieve these air quality levels is the use of HIPAA uh, or high efficiency particular air filters. Uh, so I'm in this picture, I'm showing you one of the one picture for Texas State University Medical Room. Uh, these filters are used in a wide variety of industrial, commercial, and institutional installations where the higher possible degree of air cleaning is required. Uh, now we, we're going to go and discuss in, in detail. Uh, the specs and how these um, specs are computed for, for specific facilities. Uh, and we are gonna look at the HVAC system, the HVAC system design, uh, which typically controls the, the room temperature. The purpose of heating, ventilation and air conditioning is to control the temperature, humidity and cleanliness of the environment within the facility. The input required by the expert, expert to design an expert system includes the facility layout and the construction specifications. Uh, the facilities planner should be able to provide the expert, expert with this input. Also, should be, uh, we are expected to understand how the expert, expert translate this input into the HVAC requirements. So that's why it's important for us to have an idea of how this um, metrics are computed because we as facilities planner we have that discussion with the expert on uh, in HVAC uh, systems. Um, so let's talk about the heating requirements for a facility. Uh, this is referred to as the heat loss and is calculated using this equation. Uh, QH equals QF plus QR QG plus QD plus QW plus QI. So each one of these um, variables have a, a specific, it's looking at a specific area of the design. Um, so QH is looking at the total heat loss for the facility. And then QF is looking at the heat loss through, that is uh, for, the, uh, for the floor or through the floor. QR is looking at the heat loss through the roof. Uh, QG is the heat loss through glass windows. QD is the heat loss through the horse. QW is the heat loss through walls. And QI is the heat loss due to infiltration. So for each one of the individual heat losses, um, we, it is, it's calculated using the, the following formula. Um, so this formula right here, Q is gonna be equal to AU times Ti minus T0. 
where Q is the heat loss for facility component, A is the area of the facility component. So if you're looking at a wall, we need to know the area of the wall. If you're looking at the floor or uh, at the ceiling, we need to know the area of the floor or the ceiling um, and so on. And then we have a, key, a U, which is a coefficient of transmission of a facility co co component. And this is a given uh, coefficient and is uh, calculated or provided by the, depending on the area that you're designing for. Um, so the location of the facility. And then we have TI and T0, which are the temperature inside the facility and T0 is the temperature outside the facility. Okay, so this is for heating requirement. Um, now for the air conditioning requirement. So this is air conditioning. The previous one was heating conditioning. For a facility is referred to as the cooling load and is obtained from this equation, which is similar, but now we are looking at other parameters. Uh, so QC is the cooling load. Um, and then we have to add this uh, nine components in order to compute that amount. Uh, so QF, QR, QG, QD, QW, QV, QS, QL, and QP. So QF again is for the floor. Uh, so, but in this case is for the cooling load due to the floor. QR is the cooling load due to the roof. QG is the cooling load due to the glass windows. Uh, QD is the cooling load due to doors. QW is cooling load due to walls. QV is cooling load due to ventilation. QS is the cooling load due to solar radiation. QL is the cooling load due to lightning and QP is the cooling load due to personnel. So um, the cooling loads for QF, which is the floor, the roof, the uh, glass windows, the doors, uh, the walls, and the ventilation are determined using uh, this expression, uh, where Q is the cooling load for facility component. A is the area of the facility component. So again, the area of the, if you're looking at the walls, the area of the walls, if you're looking at the windows, the area of the windows, uh, if you're looking at the roof, the area of the roof and, and so on. U is the coefficient of transmission of facility component. So again, this is provided, um, this is a coefficient provided and this is uh, given de depending on the location of the facility. Uh, TI is the temperature um, inside the facility and T0 is the temperature outside the facility. Uh, for the cooling load from solar radiation or QS, we have a different uh, equation. Uh, Q is gonna be equal to the area times the heat absorption of the building surface times the shade factor for various type of shading. So Q is gonna be equal to A times H times S. And these are um, the parameters. Uh, the heat absor absorption of the building surface and the shade factors, those are provided also depending on the location of the facility. And then Q oil, which is, uh, the cooling due to the lining is going to depend on the type of lining that is used in the facility. So if you're using incandescent lining or fluorescent lining. Uh, so depending on that, you are going to look at the incandescent or fluorescent wattage, uh, and you are gonna multiply that times this amount. Um, so the cooling load from personnel may be calculated by determining the QP. And that's based on the number of men or women and women performing light and heavy work at and multiplying that times the heat gain factors given in this table. Uh, so 
if if you have my, men doing light work or heavy work, uh, that's going to change the heat, heat gains, right? And also for women, heavy and light work, that's going to change the uh, heat gains. Uh, and then depending on the type of work that they're performing in the facility, you are going to multiply the number of people, number of men, or number of men times the heat gains, and also the number of women times the heat gains. So let's look at one example. Um, so in this example one, we have a an 18 tall facility having the dimensions 250 times 100, has eight four by eight double pane glass windows and two three by eight glass doors. So eight windows and two doors double pane glass and glass doors on both the front and the back sides. The facility is made of eight uh, inches solid cylinder block and a one inch metal insulated roof with an insulated ceiling and an uninsulated slab floor. The facility is located in Chicago, Illinois. So the question is, what is the heat loss? The following data needed to calculate the heat loss may be obtained for a variety of sources. So for this particular um, example, I'm providing you with the data for UF, UR, UG, UD, UW, and UI. So we want to compute this um, um, heat loss. And if you remember, um, the equation for a heat loss equals QH is going to be equal to QF, which is for the floor, plus QR, which is for the roof, plus QG which is for the glass windows. Um, plus QD, which is for the doors. Plus QW, which is for the walls. And QI, which is for infiltration. Okay, so that's gonna be the heat loss. And for Q, we are gonna compute Q. It's gonna be equal to A times U times T I minus T zero. Okay, and we have those values here uh, where Q is the heat loss for the facility component. A is the area of the facility component. So let me see. A is the area of facility component. Um, we have U equals the coefficient of transmission. of transmission and then TI is the temperature inside the facility inside facility and T0 is the temperature outside the facility temperature outside facility. Okay, so using this information, we are going to compute the, um, the heat loss for 
uh, this facility. So I'm gonna use a different color here. Um, Okay, so let's start with uh, QF. So QF is um, equal to the uh, floor. So we need to compute the area of the floor um so let's draw the facility here at the top and so this is the floor and this is 250 times 100 feet so the area for the floor is 250 times 100 so this is 250 times 100 um, times U for the floor. So that's 0.81 um, BTU, so it's 0 0.81 um, times TI minus D0. So Ti minus T0 is 70 degrees Fahrenheit minus zero degrees Fahrenheit. So the, um, this is equal to 14.175 and the units times T to the power of five BTUs an hour. Um, so these units are uh, feet square. This one is BTU over an hour feet square uh, Fahrenheit. So Fahrenheit are canceled, feet square are canceled. So we get BTU an hour. Uh, the next one is QR. QR is um, for the roof. Uh, so the area of the roof is the same as the area of the floor. Um, so again, this is um, 250 feet times 100 feet. Um, for the roof, we get 0.20. So 0 0.2 and the temperature difference again is 70 minus zero Fahrenheit. So this is equal to 3.5 times 10 over five BTU an hour. So that's for the roof. Uh, now we have the uh, glass windows. So QG. So we now have to determine the, um, the number of windows that we have for this facility and the area of those windows. So, um, so this is telling us that it has eight, four by eight double pane glass windows um, on both the front and the back. So in total, we have 16 double pane glass windows. So we have 16 glass windows and the area of those 
glass windows are four feet times eight. Um, and then for the glass windows, this is the parameter, 0.63. And then the temperature difference is here. So in total, we have 0.226 times 10 to the 5 BTU an hour. Um, the next one is the QD. So QD, again, we are gonna look at how many doors we have. Uh, so it says two three by eight glass doors on both the front and the back. So we have four doors and the area are three feet times eight. And the parameter for the doors are 1.13. And the difference is again, 70 degrees. So for this, we have 0 0.076 times 10 to the five BTUs an hour. The next one is uh, QW, which are for the um, walls. So we have four walls in this facility. Um, and two of the walls have windows and doors. Two, and then two of the walls um, are not having windows and doors. Um, so in order for us to compute the, the area, of the, for the walls, we have to take into account the area of each wall for the facility, outside walls, and also whether or not they have windows. Because if they have windows and doors, we have to subtract that area from, from the area. So this facility has walls that are um, 18 tall, so 18 tall, walls. So I'm putting that in the in the draw here. Uh, so the area for the walls are depending on um, the, the location of such walls. So we have 18. So going back to to this picture here at the top, we have two walls that have an area of 100 times 18. And then we had two walls that have an area of 250 times 18. So for the first one, we have 1800 square feet. And for the second one, we have 4,500 square feet. Okay, so we have two walls with this area and two walls with this area. Okay, so that's clear. Uh, and now we have to subtract those areas for the doors and, and the windows. So the QW or the area for QW is the following. We have the area for the walls. So we have two walls with um, 4,500 feet square. And then plus two walls with 1,800 feet square. And then we have to subtract the area of the windows. Um, 
So it's 16 windows times 32 feet square minus the area of the doors, which are four um, times 24 feet square. And all this expression is giving us the, the area. Um, the area for the walls. And then we multiply that by, so all this multiply by 0.39 and also multiply by the difference in temperature. So 70 Fahrenheit minus zero Fahrenheit. And this is equal to 3.274 to the power BTU an hour. Um, so we have left QI. QI is infiltration. So in this one, we had to take into account the infiltration due to the ceiling and the walls. Okay, so we had the, the area for the ceiling or the roof. Uh, so that area for the room is 2,500. Sorry, 25,000 feet square plus the area of the walls. So we have four walls. And if you add the area for each one of the walls, um, so it's two times 1800 plus two times 4,500, that's going to be equal to 12,600 square. All this multiply by 0.20, which is the Efficient. Times the difference. Twenty degrees Fahrenheit minus zero degrees Fahrenheit, and this is equal to five point twenty six ten to the power of five. CTUs an hour. So now we have all the coefficients that we needed to compute this heat loss. So QH is going to be equal to. 14.175, then to the power of five, plus 3.5, 10 to the power of five, plus 0 0.226, 10 to the power of five, plus 0 0.076, 10 to the power of five, plus three point two seventy four ten 10 to the power of five, plus 
5.26, 10 to the power of five. Let me double check those numbers. 0 0.76, 3 points and four. So QH is gonna be equal to 26.251 and to the power of five BTUs an hour. So this is a hit loss for this facility. Okay, so we went, we started with the uh, um, equation at the top, QH, and we had to take into account the uh, it loss due to the floor, roof, glass windows, doors, walls, and infiltration. Uh, so using the information, uh, the data uh, for the heat loss, the U values provided by the problem, we were able to compute the, the heat, loss, heat loss for each one of the, of the areas of the facility and then compute the total heat loss for the facility. In the next example, we are going to look, instead of the heat loss, we are going to um, compute the cooling load uh, for the facility. So for the facility described in the previous example, given the following additional information, what is the cooling load? The front of the facility faces west and all windows and doors have awnings. The lining within the facility consists of 575 fluorescent luminaries, each containing two 60 watt lamps. Within the facility, 75 men performing light work and 50 women performing light work will be employed. The outside design is uh, design temperature is 97 Fahrenheit, and the inside design temperature is 78 Fahrenheit. Okay, so we're going to use this information. Um, we are going to proceed um, as we did for the previous problem. So. For cooling, we have QC equals QF plus QR plus QG plus QD plus QW plus QS which is for solar radiation. Plus QL, which is for lightning. And QP, which is for personnel. And also we have QV for ventilation. Um, so the QS, um, these QS, QL, QP are computed differently as we stated in, in the discussion. Um, and the rest, QF, QR, QG, QD, QW, and QV are computed using the regular formula, which is QA, Q equals UA times T0 minus TI. Okay, so um, so QS equals A times H time S, where 
A is the area of the glass surface. H is the heat absorption. of building surface. And S is the shade factor. Um, for QL, we have two formulas depending on the type of, of lightning. So QL, if it is incandescent or QL if it is fluorescent. And QP is equal to the number of men and or women times the heat gains. And this is coming from the table that I showed you. <clears throat> and then for the rest, for the rest of the Qs, we are gonna use Q equals AU times D zero minus TI. Okay, so let's work with this problem. QF is Q for the floor. Um, so this is gonna look like very similar to what we did in the previous example with the difference now that the temperatures are are changing because we are designing considering the, the outside temperature. Um, so QF, which is for the floor, is going to be also the area that we computed in the previous example times 0.81 times the difference in temperature, which is 97 Fahrenheit minus 78 Fahrenheit. So this first is 3.85 times 10 to the five BTUs hour. QR, which is for the roof, same area, 25,000 feet square. Uh, the coefficient is 0 0.2. And again, these coefficients are coming from this previous example. So I'm using the same coefficients. Um, and then the, time, the temperature difference is 97 Fahrenheit. Minus 78 Fahrenheit. And this is 0 0.95 and 5 BTU an hour. Um, Q for the glass windows, as we stated in the previous example, we have 16 uh, glass windows that has an area of 32 feet square. And the coefficient is 0.63. And the temperature difference is this one. So this coefficient equals 0 0.6, 0 0.06 times
10 to the power of two, PTU an hour. Um, QD which is for the doors. Um, so four doors times the area for the doors times 1.13. times the difference in temperature this is going to be 2 0.02 10 to the power of 5 BTUs an hour and we have Q walls so we have again the area of the walls minus the area of the windows and the area minus the area of doors. Um, so this is two times 45, 100 feet square, which is the area of two of the walls. Um, and then we have two other walls, this area, 1800 feet square minus the area of the windows minus the area, I'm sorry, this should be four, the area of the doors. So all this times point 0.39 times the difference in temperature, which is 97 Fahrenheit minus 78 Fahrenheit. So this QW equals 0 0.88 times T to the power of five BTU an hour. And then we have QV, QV for um, the ventilation. So QV equals the the area of the roof plus the area of the walls, all the walls, multiplied by coefficient times the difference in temperature so this coefficient qv equals 1.43 10 to the 5 btu an hour Okay, so we have QF, QR, QG, QP, um, QD, QW, and QV. So now we have to compute the QS, QL, and QP on the next slide. So the heat absorption factor For the west side, 
I'm sorry. The west side. of a facility in Chicago is 100 BTU in our bit scooter. And this is for the west side, for the east side. Is 75 BTU an hour, it's where. The shape factor awnings are 0 0.3. So using this information, we can compute the solar radiation as QS equals the area for the windows and the doors for one of the areas of the facility. So we're going to look at the west and the east separately in this piece. So, so for one wall, sorry. So for one wall, you have eight windows that have an area of 32 feet square and two doors that have an area of 24 feet square. And all that is for the west. So we are going to multiply this time 100, which is the factor. Um, and we are going to add this Okay, so we have 100 and then we have plus for the east side times 32 feet square plus uh, two doors, two doors times 24 feet square. All that multiply by the 75, this has to be multiplied by 0.3. And this is multiplied by 75 um, BTUs um, by hours fit square times 0.3. Okay, so the Result for this is 0 0.16 times 10 to the five uh, BTUs an hour. Um, the cooling load from lightning may be calculated using the following equation. Um, so in this facility, we have fluorescent, uh, so QL for fluorescent um,
So we have the 575 uh, luminaries, which each one has two uh, 60 watts amps. And then this multiplied by the coefficient coming from the table for fluorescent. And this is going to be equal to Q L, which is 2.93 times 10 to the 5 BTUs an hour. Um, for personnel QP, we have the information on slide 32 about the, the, num, the BTUs an hour generated by women and men. So in this case, we have 75 men uh, doing light work. So this is 800 BTUs an hour. And 50 women doing light work. So from the table, we get the 700 BTUs an hour. So the total for this is 0 0.95 times 10 to the five BTUs an hour. Then using the equation stated here, using this equation, we are going to compute the cooling load for this facility. So the cooling load is going to be equal to, uh, change the color. So QC is going to be equal to 3.85 and to the 5 plus 0 0.95, 10 to the five, plus 0 0.06, 10 to the five, plus 0 0.02, 10 to the five, plus 0 0.88, 10 to the five, plus, We'll check this number, 1.43, 10 to the five plus 0 0.16, 10 to the five plus 2.93, 10 to the five plus 0 0.95 times 10 to the five so QC is going to be equal to 11.23 and to the five BTUs an hour. So that uh, completes this first part of, of lecture six, um, in which we discuss the introduction to um, space requirements and layout for facilities. Uh, and we cover the structural system performance, enclosure systems, and atmospheric systems.